Stand for 911. Where's your emergency? Oh, this is here. 241 Rock, Rock Crimmon Road. What's Send the problem? The Send the police. Send the police. What's the problem there? The, the, the chip killed my, my friend. What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please. What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police up with a gun. With a gun. Hurry you're, you're up. You're off a gun. Please, hurry up. He's killing my girlfriend. What is the problem? He's killing my friend. Who's killing your friend? Chim my chimpanzee. Oh, your chimpanzee please. is killing your friend. Yes. He ripped their part. Hurry up. With a gun. Hurry up, please. There's someone on the way. With guns, please. You shoot them. What is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey is. He ripped their face off. He ripped their face off? He tried to try to attack me. Please, please, Okay, hurry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. Can you put yourself away? I don't want the monkey Get attacking you. Here. Please, hurry up. Listen to me. Uh, they're on the way, oh, ma'am. They got to shoot them, please. Please, hurry, hurry. Are you there with your friend? I need you to help your friend. Can you go help your friend? I can't. He tried to attack me now. Is he still there with your friend? Yes. Okay, so then back off. Then don't get any closer, please. okay? They're already on the way. Please. If the monkey moves away from your friend, let me know, okay? So we can try I to help your friend. No, no, I can't. She's dead. She's dead. Why Why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. He ripped what apart? Her face? My, everything. Oh. He ripped her apart? Listen, I think I'm going to sleep. I think I'm going to pass nope, out. Nope, just breathe, okay? I'm going to stay I with can't. you on the phone until they get there. Listen, <laughs> please, hurry. Please, please, hurry. <laughs> oh, my God. they got to have their guns out. They got out their guns out. Listen to me. Oh my God. <sighs> is this your monkey or whose monkey yes. is it? It's your monkey. No, it's mine. He's how how do you know how big is he? How, yes, how many 200 pounds? Four hundred pounds. Four hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred pounds. Listen to me, please. Where are they? Where are they? And he's a chimp, correct? Yes. Where is it? where are they? They're going your way. They're going as fast as they can your way. Okay. Please. Please go faster. Please, please, Derek. Please, 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 please. Is the monkey still by your friend, or can you get close to your friend? He's eating her. He's eating her. Please. God, oh, please. Okay, I need you to calm down for me. I know it's hard, okay? I know it's hard. But they're going as fast as they can your way, okay? Oh, my God. Please. Please. They tell them they got to shoot them. Because I tried stabbing him, and he's not, and it made him worse. Okay, Please Sandra. Have them shoot him. They will. Sandra, I already have the fire department Please. close by, okay? So as soon as the police gets there, the fire department's going to move in, okay? The fire Listen. department can't move in yet, but as soon as the police officers show up... Please tell them, shoot him, because he's going to try to attack me now. Just breathe, Sandra. Shoot him! Shoot him! Sandra, stay in your car. Sandra, I need you to stay in your car. Shoot him, please. I tried stabbing him, and, and he's hurt now, too. So so he's going to attack anybody. I can't get out of this car. Lock your doors on your car and stay it, there with me. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. He will rip the doors right Sandra, open. just do what I'm please. telling you to. Stay in the car. Please the police officers will handle it. Please tell him to shoot him. <laughs> please. Please tell him to kill him, please. They did, Sandra. They're shooting at him already, okay? But he's not dead. I know. They will continue until he's dead, okay? I just need you to stay on the phone with me and breathe. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is Travis the Chimpanzee. He was born on October the 21st, 1995 and died in 2009, which made him 14 years old. He weighed 200 pounds, which is 91 kg, about the same weight as a healthy athletic male. He was a family pet that belonged to Jerry and Sandy Herald, who loved and adored him like a son. Chimps are the closest relative we have to us humans. 
we share the same DNA, but humans have that one extra chromosome that sets us apart as a dominant species. One thing chimpanzees have though, is strength. In fact, a fully grown chimpanzee has the strength of five men, when angered and enraged. They have sharp fang-like jaws and an immense bite force that far exceeds humans and even dogs. Because of their strength and opposable thumbs and the understanding and awareness of what's happening around them. In other words, they are like a fully grown adult with the strength of five men, equipped with fangs but with the mind of an adolescent child. And one cold foggy day in February 2009, Travis proved to Sandy and to the world how dangerous he really was. He attacked Charla Nash and overpowered her to the ground. Then he began ripping her face off bit by bit and pulling off all her fingers and thumbs. As Charla screamed, he bit off her lips and ate it. He ripped off Charla's jaw and nose. This is the full story of Travis the Chimp and what happened that day. The story of Travis the Chimp is well known and throughout the years before she died, Sandy Herald was blamed and got a lot of bad press. I'm not saying she's innocent, but after viewing other YouTube videos on this, I've decided to tell the story from a different angle and an unbiased point of view. I've researched the story and I'm gonna report the facts in an unclouded documentary. This documentary will tell the whole story of Sandy, Charla and Travis. You can decide after hearing all the facts, who was to blame, or if this was just a wild animal being just that. This is Sandy Herald, who was born and spent her entire life in Stamford, Connecticut. As an only child, Sandy spent her day playing and looking after animals. She had German Shepherd dogs, and she tended to animals on a farm, and she had horses on the property. Being around animals all the time played a massive role in her upbringing and it's fair to say that she was used to being in the company of her furry friends, which would set a chain of events that led her to meet a baby chimp one day. At the age of 30, Sandy married her third husband, Jerry Harold, who was kind, passionate and devoted to his wife. Sandy and Jerry opened several businesses in the Stamford area, including a tow operation and an auto body shop that would soon make them into millionaires. Because Sandy loved horses, she would attend rodeos and race professionally all over the state. This is where she met her soon-to-be best friend, Charla Nash, who was drifting from place to place. One day, Charla and Sandy spotted a baby chimp dressed in cowboy clothes who rode a horse around the ring. Sandy fell in love with this chimpanzee and wanted to take him home, but this was another chimpanzee that belonged to the rodeo company, so they said their goodbyes. That was the day that the seed was planted in her heart. If she hadn't have seen and interacted with that chimpanzee that day, she would never have been interested in getting one as a pet. This is an extremely important fact in her story. The businesses were doing great and the money was coming in. Sandy and Jerry were happy, so she started looking to buy a chimpanzee. While Jerry was at home tending to the businesses, Sandy got in contact with an animal breeder called Connie Casey from Festus, Missouri. A deal was made and Sandy handed over $50,000 in cash and, in return, she was handed a tiny little chimp wearing a nappy and was wrapped in a blanket. This was Travis. Travis had come from the jungles of Africa after his mother Coco had been snatched and taken by poachers. So, $50,000 lighter and with a baby chimp wrapped in a blanket, they boarded a flight home. Back at home in Stamford, Sandy and Jerry raised Travis as a normal human child. Travis absorbed everything and began to learn our language. He was dressed in an extensive range of clothes, fit for any growing boy. As money wasn't a problem, because of the businesses, the couple reinvented the whole house to accommodate all of Travis's needs. They installed ropes and tire swings all over the house and a net for him to sleep in. 
When they weren't at home, they had a heavy metal door installed to keep Travis in. So, they must have known at some extent that Travis posed some threat or safety, otherwise why install such a heavy door? But, as we'll soon find out, this door wasn't so hard to unlock for this clever chimpanzee. Charla Nash, Sandy's old friend, started coming to visit and she brought her young daughter Brianna with her to play with Travis. Travis loved them and they loved Travis. Up until now, there hasn't been any problems with Travis. On the 4th of April 2004, Jerry, Sandy's husband, died of a rapidly spreading stomach cancer. Before Jerry died, he begged Sandy to give up Travis to Chimp, saying, he's too much for you to handle. But, again, for the second time, Sandy chose to ignore his advice. In hindsight, this was another reason that led Travis down the path that ultimately led to an appalling attack on Charla Nash. In the wild, chimpanzees obey a hierarchy with the alpha and omega male and female, which lead the group. This hierarchy keeps apes in line and builds structures and bonds and relationships. For Travis, Jerry was his alpha and Sandy was his omega. But when Jerry died, Travis did what any animal would do in that situation. He became the alpha male in the house and his temper and violence escalated. At this point, Travis was 14 years old now. He was five feet tall and 240 pounds and morbidly obese. He spent the majority of his day snacking, watching TV and playing on his computer. That day, it was February the 16th. Sandy had taken Charla to get her hair colored and curled. Sandy started cleaning Travis's room when he found the keys and opened that big heavy metal door I mentioned. He was very agitated and she tried to calm him down and get him back into the house. When this failed, Sandy dropped a Xanax into a mug of tea. Now, after this case was public knowledge, blood samples were taken from Travis and his levels of Xanax in the system didn't match what Sandy had said. It was much higher. Side effects of Xanax include paranoia, memory loss, mood swings, not to mention Xanax shouldn't have been administered to a chimpanzee in the first place. This was the third and final turn of the screw. Travis was about to flip. After accepting defeat and trying to get Travis back in, Sandy called Charla over to help. Charla arrived on the scene at about 3.40, opened the iron gate and drove towards the house. She stepped out of the car, which was a different make and model than her usual. Travis was 35 feet away on the frozen dirt and grass, watching her. He didn't recognize her because her hair was colored differently and shaped and styled. Also, her car was a new make and model. Suddenly, he knuckled around all the way towards her and stood up on two feet. Travis knocked Charla to the ground and immediately Charla was bleeding. Sandy screamed and grabbed a nearby snow shovel. She began hitting Travis over the head, but he didn't stop. He continued to hurt Charla, unyielding. Hysterically, Sandy ran back to the house and grabbed a butcher knife. She ran back over to where Travis was standing over Charla, the whole time chewing, ripping and pulling. Sandy plunged the knife into Travis's back, but he didn't stop, so she stabbed him two more times, to little effect. Still, he carried on ripping Charla apart and screaming and pounding on her head. Sandy got into her car about 15 feet away, locked the door and then dialed 911. When the authorities finally arrived 12 minutes later, they saw a body laying on the frozen ground, naked, lifeless and covered in half of her blood supply. Travis emerged from behind them. He swatted the driver's side mirror. Then he went to the passenger side door and tried to open it. When it didn't open, he walked around to the other side. As he walked over to the driver's side, he pulled open the handle and the door opened. The officer lurched, hesitated. He fumbled with the holster, trying to remove his gun. 
Travis stared at him, baring his blood-streaked teeth. In one swift motion, the officer at last released his gun and fired four rounds into Travis. The ape staggered backwards, screeched really loudly, defecated, and then ran off back into the house. The officer got out of the car and saw on the ground were huge chunks of scalp and flesh and also fingers and thumbs lay about all over the ground. He walked over to the body and, with the stump of what remained of her arm, Charla Nash reached for his leg. Amazingly, she was still alive. Meanwhile, Travis had walked back into his bedroom, lied down on his bed and died. Charla Nash's injuries were overwhelming. Travis had bitten and tore away her eyelids, nose, jaws, lips and all of her scalp. He had broken all the bones in her facial structure. He ripped off one of her hands and virtually ate most of the other. He also dug his fingers into her eyeballs, rendering her blind. And still, she did not die. Charla Nash underwent initially 15 months of medical intervention. Her family filed for a $50 million lawsuit. Now, Sandy was alone. Sometime later, after the lawsuit and months of media scrutiny, her chest began to hurt. Sandy was rushed into hospital where it was found her aorta was bulging. She was prepped for theatre but her lungs filled with blood. Sandy died. A few miles away in Stamford, there is a cemetery that has no tombstones. A plot there belongs to the heralds. Inside a secured vault, inside a secured coffin, is Sandy and Jerry, and by her right arm in an urn is the ashes of Travis the Chimpanzee. There you go guys, that's the story of Travis the Chimp. It's a very sad story. On one side you feel sorry for this woman who wanted kids and only had Travis. But on the other, she was reckless. Let me know what you think and who is to blame, the monkey, Jerry or Sandy. So with that being said, if you're a fan of the strange, dark and mysterious and you love all things horror, then click the like button for me. I've been working my ass off to bring you guys content and I love doing this. Another thing I want to show you is this. Only a small percentage of you guys who watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you are already watching, can you make it official and come over to Project Dark Knight Horror? So thank you for joining me this day. You'll hear from me soon on the next video. Until then, I'm the Dark Knight, signing off. Peace. Don't ever laugh as the hearse goes by For you may be the next to die They wrap you up in a big white sheet From your head down to your feet They put you in a big black box And cover you up with dirt and rock